This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hearties, and welcome once again to Full Stream Ahead. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me as always is my skinny rich friend. It's Moz. Hey, welcome back, Moz. Welcome back to Full Stream Ahead. For those of you who are avid listeners, you know that we were going to do the killers on um, uh, Amazon Prime, but that wound up being... Not the best show, and one, neither one of us really felt. So we searched the internet again, debated many concepts, and came across what I think is a delightful little show, which hopefully we can get a little airtime for, a little thing on Netflix called I Am Not Okay With This. Season 1, Episode 1, Dear Diary. Man, what Your a best... great show this is. It is, it is. Uh, let, me, let me do the intro here. <clears throat> When her best friend and secret crush hooks up with a crude jock, Sid seethes with anger, and her feelings boil over in startling ways. Our director is Jonathan Entwistle. Uh, writers on this is Jonathan Entwistle, who gets the teleplay by Christy Hall, who also gets a teleplay by bleh, teleplay by. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jonathan Entwistle and Christy Hall also get those de- developed by credits. And hey, you know what? This is based on a comic book Whoa. by Charles S. Forsman. Ooh. So thank you, Charles S. Forsman, for this wonderful new show. Uh, so <clears throat> so- Sophia Lillis plays Sidney Novak. Uh, Wyatt Olaf plays Stanley Barber. Sophia Bryant is Dina. Uh, Caitlin Rose Perkins is Maggie Novak. Uh, Richard Ellis is Brad Lewis. Uh, Patricia Scanlon is Miss Capriati. David Thune is Mr. File. Zachary S. Williams is Ricky Berry. Adian Wojtek Hissung is Liam Novak. And that's all the, all the acting credits we're mm. going to read. Okay, but yes, this is a fun show. Um, this is, I got, I got to say, this is such an interesting take because exactly what this show is going to be is not immediately clear, mm. although it does end up open with what is clearly a scene from the future <laughs> of the girl running in a filthy dress being ch- chased by the cops. You think it's just filthy and not blood? Well, I mean, okay. So, well, that's the thing. For those who are not in the wear, there are some interesting carry vibes. For sure. Associated with this film. Yes. And, of course, yes. Obviously, because I haven't watched the whole thing all the way through yet. Though I haven't watched the last episode yet. <laughs> and I don't even know if the last episode actually keys into the first episode. Hmm. Um, I watched everything but the last episode because I really wanted to recommend this ep- this series to Maz hmm. to see if this would be the one that we 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 settled on. Um, and coming through all this uh, as it's um, played out, obviously I think that scene is meant to remind us of Carrie. Sure. But in the sense that I think that might be too obvious of a line, hmm. I don't know if they're going to go there. I think it may be – you're meant to think it's going to be something, especially because it's where we're opening. I can see that. Well, although what's and interesting what it's is, actually going to be is something else. Uh, what's interesting is the next episode, it begins with her looking the same but in a much different mind state. She's running and she's you know imminently being pursued. Um, so I wonder if we're going back in time with the opening scene 
uh, a little bit further every episode so they meet up sort of in the middle in the last episode or if it's going in the future because she's calm and collected just walking down lamenting her situation in the opening scene for this first episode the second episode she's running um and so i just thought maybe they're scaling it backwards or forwards yeah um that's an interesting take on it and i i actually hadn't even noticed that in my in, when i was going over these quickly to do my rewatch hmm. uh, before we watched today so i didn't even notice that you know and that may in fact be and now i'm trying to think do we because again it's been a while since i watched the middle episodes after episode two so hmm. now i can't even remember if they do follow that trope so hmm. we're gonna have to keep watching and see how it starts up again uh next week and the weekend and if i can i but, think the one thing that really just sold me on this show was how like really really good the acting is both her oh yeah i mean because she was in the movie it and, oh she was yeah and to see her to go from playing a character of, of that kind of personality and embodying this character like even with the way she walks with the way she moves the way she holds her shoulders it's very specific and very intentional relative to her performance in it and so just watching that and and the subtle things that how a moment hits her and how her reactions respond to each moment is is very very thought out and very intricate and and really makes for a great performance and the same goes for the kid playing stan um and their chemistry oh, yeah. between them is just so so wonderful and it, it's like rarely do you see acting this good yeah i mean in general i think this is a lot of really good actors actually what i gotta say you know who i really loved in this 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 series hmm. um is richard ellis the guy who plays brad lewis mm -hmm. the jock mm. it was such because, great casting yeah well you know what he, you know who he reminds me of who Chris Evans when he plays villains. Hmm. Hmm. He's, that. he's got that. If you ever if you've ever seen any of Chris Evans' things before he became Captain America, when he used to always be the jerk, because before he got to be Captain America, he was always the jerk in things. Oh, he, did, right. he did a bunch of those he, teen movies, right? He did a bunch of things, but yeah, but you remember he was one. I think he's he's one of the evil exes from. Um, uh, what's his name versus somebody else? Uh, also based on a comic book, and I'm trying to remember the name of that. Um, with uh, the kid from. Uh, oh, that Michael oh, Sarah yeah. movie where it's almost a. Michael Sarah, yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. So he's one of the evil exes there, and he's he's done a few other ones where he's just, you know, just sort of the cocky jock <laughs> and this kid. It's like, wow, that's our next Captain America. Huh. This kid. Because he's got the same look, and he also he plays that jerk really well. Yeah. And I think that you know part of the part of the thing that I think is great about Captain America is, of course, he does have a lot of uptight qualities to mm. him, and <laughs> that uptightness is translates well when you're playing a jerk jock, and also plays well when you're just a uh, <laughs> Captain America. Mm. So anyway, I, I really like I really like uh, I really liked his performance in this. I'll say he is my hardest working man in show business, something we haven't done in right. a while. Um, just because he has he, he has the very difficult job of playing a a a beloved teen in a high school mm. which is in and of itself, a very tight thread, to, a needle to thread, because you have to be likable because nobody would like him if he was just completely unlikable. Right. So everything he does has to be him negotiating his own story and you know, mm. and telling his own tale. And I think as it goes on, there is a quality of this where if you stop for a minute and thought about it from somebody else's point of view – not everything is as cut and dry as, which of course is, is, is how all teen dramas are. When you think about it, it's like, it's, we get our protagonist's point of view and we tend to see everyone in the hero, same hero and villain logic that they see themselves in. But one quality of this is I feel that they actually do, whether it's the writing or the acting or a combination of both, they really do give you the idea that actually, Everybody has their own story that they're they're all negotiating all this stuff and and Sydney's even though it's the protagonist's point of view and really a full story that we're gonna get 
everyone else's story too. Right. I mean, heck, Stanley Barber's story is clearly something going on with that. And we only get like wacky next door neighbor from him. We get just the hints of what his life is. Um, but you know, there's enough of a life there that could certainly support its own series if that ever got 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 reviewed got viewed. Yeah, because you know? there's how someone lands in that emotional space where you're so comfortable with yourself um, mm-hmm. must be a very interesting story. Oh yeah, well you know, and that's what makes this a really great series. And you know, it's it's an amazing series because these are all really short episodes. Yeah. these are like. 22 minute like if you were watching them with commercial interruptions it'd be a half hour show on broadcast but here it just no this is what you would normally do Mm. in a normal tv show a normal half hour tv show it's about 22 minutes and that's what they give us and it is fantastic because they use all 22 of those minutes absolutely and and you really start caring and feel for each of these characters and and also while we're mentioning good acting performances the younger brother also is is Mm -hmm. really really good yeah he is he is he is delightful as the as the precocious little brother and 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 believable at it not just sort of like because these are difficult lines i think to to come off that way and make it still seem real like he seems like a real kid not a, a a character made up on on a sheet of paper you know yeah yeah i can i can definitely see that i can definitely feel where you're where you're going with going where you're going with that and yeah i mean it's it is really well the only and here's what i'll say the only relationship and maybe i'm wrong on this and maybe and maybe there's like every woman who listens to our podcast is gonna say oh charlie if you only knew but i just felt the antagonism between the daughter and the mother seemed really really intense it seemed it seemed real to me because i mean that's well, see, I guess that's the thing. I, I, it, it just struck me that everyone was just so mad at each other. And I guess to me, it's like, is is that – and maybe it is. Maybe that is exactly how mothers and daughters are. And that's are. how sons and fathers are too. Well, I don't know. I was always pretty cool with my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, maybe, maybe I'm the weird. No, guy. no, no. I mean, <laughs> like it's uh, it, it, you know, it, mean, there's good and they're bad. But like in, in in the spots where it's bad, it definitely rang true to me. Because mm-hmm. yeah. it's all guess, what it really is isn't that you have any real bad feelings towards the other person, but it's it's just things that are left unsaid. And lamenting those things that are left unsaid and then being angry about that. And so every sort of con- conversation seems like a confrontation without confronting the thing that wants to be confronted. And so that sort of unsettles you and then you react to other things because you can't talk about the things you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, and of course, yeah. And of course, at the core of all of this is the thing that no one wants to talk about, which is that. Her father killed him, killed himself. Yeah. And from her perspective, yeah. the mother's perspective, you know, she, she's caught between a rock and a hard place because you can't – Her, this girl has already gotten her father taken away. And now do you want to take away the memory of the father too? Yeah. Uh, and, and But she just has to grin and bear it. Ugh. Yeah. And and But you know what's, what's funny about that is like, yeah – you know, she doesn't want to badmouth the father to the daughter, you know, but at the same time, the daughter clearly didn't have any illusions about her father. She mentions that he's a pothead, you know. Uh, in fact, you know, the next episode, she, she makes the but point. But that's that, also you know, the worst thing she mentions about him, you know. Like she doesn't well, – yeah. I don't think she has any idea of the rest of who her father was. Mm, that's true. That's true. Um, you know, except for the fact that I guess you know maybe he wasn't working, which mm. definitely seems to be mm. the case. You know, a non, a, a non, an unemployed uh, pothead is not the best mm-hmm. father, and certainly is going to be a struggle for the mom. And then ends his life, and whatever he was bringing to the table is now gone. Mm. Um, and they're struggling. You know, this family is clearly struggling. Um. And it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of hard when you think about it. The 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 relationship that the mother and the daughter are having is 
the do- the mother needs the daughter to step up with the other child. And, you know, maybe it's because I was the baby of the family. Mm. It's a little weird to me that it's so horrible to the teenage daughter that she has to watch the the – her oh, absolutely. With a absolutely. To, but, you know, but she's a teenager. You know, they can't see but more than, you know, one one day ahead of the, themselves, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose so. It's just, I guess, in its own way, a, a little, like I said, I guess it's a little disheartening to me that, you know, she is yeah. kind of very unhelpful. Oh, yeah. And no, she's, that, she's not know? healthy emotionally in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. And that I think is the, and you know, it's, 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 it's interesting because again, she is the protagonist, but she also is a character who is perhaps, you know, not made lovable, not made, not made to be seen as anything other than another random teen in a rather unfortunate situation with a lot of anger and a lot of difficulty, you know? Yeah. And and you know and these are the things that make it a good story. And, and but, yeah, um, again, and to that point, it's funny she is the protagonist, but she her, her own self is the ticking time bomb that's working against her, you know, um, yeah. moving the story along. So, but she plays that and, really well too. She plays that like powder keg of a personality in every scene, um, especially. Uh, well, I, I guess when we get to it, but like when. When the best friend tells her that she got with Billy, that oh, yeah. scene and, and, then, and the way she reacts to it, how incredulous she is, how hurt she is, how hard she tries to mask those emotions and how badly she fails at it, um, it is oh, yeah. just wonderful. And it is, and again, and you know what we haven't even talked about here, which is the real carry aspect of this because we do see as we're wandering through this that this woman <clears throat> does have these telekinetic powers <clears throat> you know in a way that is very um uh perhaps worrisome you know but of course when it as it's happening she is like well that didn't happen you know, and to that extent, you know, the, the narrative device of this is, here's why it's called Dear Diary, is the counselor, because this girl has anger issues, because we've seen her lashing out a lot, she has a lot of anger. Mm. To the point where you start to maybe wonder if she does have a chemical imbalance. Maybe that's why she's so angry all the time. She's been asked to start journaling her feelings, journaling her emotions. Mm. And that is what we we see she starts to write down these notes and you know you can hear her inner dialogue and all these things overwhelming her and when she when you know brad lewis comes in and he's just chatting with her you know when when you know of course you know he's he, he's very moochy he wants her fries wants the girlfriend to buy him the fries yada 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 you know doesn't come off as a horrible person but then again also doesn't necessarily come off per se as a bad guy just maybe you know uh kind of not really thinking about how, how his actions are are playing yeah no but also it's it's really not his fault he has no idea that you know sydney has feelings for for her and so he has no idea that the bomb that has just dropped on this girl um and I, I think in that moment, you can't make him too unlikable either because we need to feel the gravity of what she just did and feel that yeah. it is a dangerous thing and sh- we need to be careful. We can't feel, oh, he deserved it. Otherwise, we won't take it as, as seriously bad of a thing or dangerous yeah. of a thing. So I think we'll walk that and line that really is, well there. Yeah, and that is the thing is that, you know, obviously she, she causes him to have a um, – a nosebleed and also again this is the first time her powers really kick in and she freaks out from mm. it mm. it really freaks her out that she did that and then of course as she's going on she starts to well i did that i didn't cause him to have a nosebleed i wasn't doing anything it's just coincidence yada 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 mm. and then later she's in her room dealing with her emotions and then all of a sudden the wall cracks mm. You know, in a very dramatic display of these new emerging powers. And that, you know, is 
what, you know, I think, you know, for us as the audience kind of seals it. Though when we get into the next episode, even again, she's trying to deny it to herself. You know, um, I think that is what is interesting about this. Because if you think about it, if you started to develop powers like this, especially things that are a little subtle, mm. you're probably going to not imagine it's correct. You know, you're going to, you know, it's like, you know, the first time you, you know, wish for a light to change and it changes, you don't start thinking, aha, I have the power over traffic lights. You go, that was weird, you know. You know, uh, you know the when you see, you know there and you know there are things that happen to you when you are a teenager and you do start to think, did I just do that? No, 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 I couldn't have done that. And for the most part, when we do that as teenagers, we are correct. We didn't just cause it to stop raining or cause the wind to stop blowing or cause the wind to start blowing. You know, we do not have that much power over the universe around us, but things happen as we're doing them as teenagers, and sometimes we ask ourselves. Do I have superpowers? <laughs> and then later on, as you say, no, 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 that's, I'm just being silly. But, you know, as we will learn, you know, she is not being so silly. These, these things she's observing are, in fact, what is happening to her. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on tonight's episode? Any final thoughts on tonight's episode? Um, no, I was I was very pleasantly surprised by this show, and I'm super glad I started watching it, and I can't wait to finish it, and I can't wait to watch the next season. Yeah, I mean it's and like I said, it's really great. It's nice short episodes, so we can get through these rather quickly and talk about them. And honestly, I have loved these, um, and I cannot wait to finish the season too. Oh, okay. you know what I just, so you know what I just realized. Yeah. Sorry, final thought. You know what I just realized. You know why I love what? Stan's character so much? Why? Because I, I always loved Ducky from Pretty in Pink. Oh, and He's yeah. totally, totally Ducky. You know, yeah. He even in looks like ways, Molly Ringwald. Yeah, that, I think that that is a definite influence that went through in the cat. And I don't know if that's maybe, you know, it's one of those questions where, like, in, I've never read the original book that this is based mm -hmm. on. Um, so I don't know if that, it may have been that when the artist originally created this, he was thinking, what if Molly Ringwald had, what if Molly Ringwald was Carrie, right. you know, wow. and that may be what he's trying to, maybe that might be what the story is. And as I played in my head, just saying that out loud as a mashup of this, what if Molly Ringwald was Carrie, mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense to me that this is Molly Ringwald as Carrie, right. you know, yeah. um, you know, if you didn't have the insane, you know, <laughs> the very insane mom that Carrie had, uh -huh. you know, it's a very, uh, it's a very different story. Because of course, so much of the story of Carrie is informed by the fact that she's living in that abusive uh, environment. Hmm. You know, but really, here you have a situation where, yeah, it's it's a lousy environment, but it's not particularly abusive. It's hard, but it's not. You know, it's not the kind of thing that's going to make a woman uh, blow up the high school dance. Right. And likewise, probably isn't going to get pig's blood dropped on her at the end of it. So, and that's the thing. that That's where I'm going with this. I get the feeling, like, if you do that, um, that is, I think it's too obvious. So I think whatever happens to her that leads up to that opening scene, I don't think it's going to be. A, a full-on carry re redo, you know. Right, because she's not going to blow up a bunch of people. Exactly. Right. Like, at most, I think, like, the punch bowl just accidentally spills on her or something, mm. you know. <laughs> you know, as as we see, you know, sometimes these things do get kind of tossed around, and, you know, <laughs> she gets mad, and the punch bowl flies across yeah. the room and hits her, you know, kind of thing. But we will see what happens when we get to that episode whatever episode it happens in. Because I got a feeling it's not going to happen by the seventh episode. I think we're going to get to that seventh episode. Yeah. And again, that's the other thing is there's only seven episodes in this. And I love we're that they're that just seventh. taking their time. It's almost like it doesn't even matter that she has superpowers. They're so inconsequential so far to the story that it really is just about their 
story, what's happening to these kids. And they make it so interesting that you don't care that it's not a full-on superhero show just yet. You care enough about the exactly. characters that you don't need it just yet. Exactly, and that's what's great about it. Okay, so Maz, if people would like to reach out and talk to you and maybe influence you with their psychic powers, how can they do Ooh, so? Bring it on. <laughs> they can uh, email me at mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Maz Manzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And, of course, um, if you are listening to this podcast, you are a fan of the Capes and Lunatics Network, the Southgate Media mm -hmm. Network, um, be sure to check the links below for other shows, uh, including the original Capes and Lunatics podcast, uh, Super Connectivity, and Enough Said, where me and Maz will be reviewing... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. once it comes back. Mm. And, of course, to help us all out as you're trying to make a little money in this business, you may want to check out Pod Life the Book on Amazon. And while you're over on Amazon, use the link in the notes below uh, to use our link through to get to Amazon. Cost you nothing. Gives us a couple of nickels back, back on the back end. And who wouldn't be happy mm. there? <laughs> Uh, I know you're. I know you're shopping from Amazon. You probably need toilet paper. Just gonna guess. Why not use our link to go buy some toilet paper? In the meantime, if you'd like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our Maz and Paz once did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail dot com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail dot com. And of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet those self-same agents of Shield when they get back. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you scurvy land lovers. You have once again come aboard and came with us across these wine dark seas. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Please. Tune in next week for another episode of Full Stream Ahead. Arc. <laughs>